Have you been struggling to qualify for the Solo Victory Cup Finals? Whether you're trying to make your first earnings or just want to be more consistent, this video is for you. The Solo Victory Cups give you $100 for every win in finals. So I'll be showing you how to qualify for the finals and then once you're in the finals, how to win games to earn money. So here's how Solo Victory Cups work. Solo Victory Cash Cups are two rounds. Round one, or opens, is available to anybody in gold rank or higher. You're given two hours to play seven games. You get up to 65 placement points per game and one point per elim. And to qualify for round two and get a chance at winning money, you need top 7,000 on EU, top 5,000 on NA, or top 2,000 on every other region. Then once you're qualified, you will play a one hour session with a maximum of three games. And then it's simple. If you win a game, you get $100. How to play opens, tips and loadouts. Now that we understand the format, let's talk about opens. There are two ways you can play this, aggressive or passive. Both work and you should play to your strengths. But let's cover some tips for both first. Most of the time, you're gonna need three out of seven good games. This means a win, a top three, and a top 10 with some kills. And you don't wanna play the same way every single game. Your first game should be your most aggressive one. And don't worry, if you die your first game with zero points, your elo is the same. You can still play aggressive. And then after you get your first game, you should focus on placement for the rest of the tournament. This format is super placement heavy. And this all starts with a good drop spot and a good game plan. Before the tournament even starts, you need to know where you're landing and you need to master it. You should never be landing somewhere you've never landed before for the first time in a tournament. One of the fastest ways to throw your tournament is to land a bunch of different spots without a plan. Here are three things you need to have before you start the tournament. You gotta know how to fight off spawn and you need to know the strong points of the drop and where third parties can come in from. You can practice this in ranked, pubs, or in other cash cups. Now let's talk about your loadout. You're always gonna need a shotgun and a spray weapon. In this season, that means the gatekeeper or the pump shotgun with an AR or SMG. The exact combination is up to you, but it's always a good idea to look at the VODs of top pros and see what they're holding for that season. And then you should save two slots for heals and one for mobility. For your heals, you typically want to run one white heal and one shield heal. White heals are pretty much only bandages and medkits, unless you land at fishing spots. So in this meta, the best loadout to have for heals is medkits and Nuka-Cola. After that, it goes fizz, bigs, minis, in that order. Your last slot is your mobility or utility if there is no mobility. For this season, I'd recommend Nitro Splash over Crash Pads. If you can't find any mobility, then pick up another heal. How to play opens aggressive. Now here's where we can talk about play styles. Regardless of if you're playing aggressive or passive, you need to be able to fight. That means if you can't win some 1v1s, you need to practice more. I'd recommend peace control maps to improve your mechanics, realistic 1v1s, or any type of zone wars and box fight map. You could even be using my map that switches from zone wars to box fights called 32 player box fight zone wars. If you wanna play aggressively, you should land at a POI with a lot of loot. This is gonna guarantee the other players will land there too. Your exact drop should be a spot that is elevated, has a lot of loot in a small area, and can quickly farm mats. With an aggressive play style, you can fight players off spawn and get a few kills early. And in the mid game, it's very important to be smart with your fights that you take. And remember, you do not have to fight everyone you see. So let's break down what a smart fight would be. You get damage on the opponent first, or you surprise attack them. You make sure that you are not surrounded by other players that are gonna third party you. You gotta make sure that you're not in storm and that zone isn't a problem. You can't be fighting on a max pull. Make sure that you're in a position that allows you to escape if needed. This one should go without saying, but you gotta have enough materials. Simple enough, your goal should be to start every fight by hitting your opponent first. This will give you time to close the distance while you try to heal up. And remember to spray when you get closer to disrupt their heals and then try to end the fight quickly. You do not wanna get stuck in a long drawn out fight that uses all your mats and heals. Even if you win those, you're gonna be down bad. You wanna look for fights where you can get a surprise on your opponent and get quick kills. Obviously, not every fight will happen exactly how you planned, so that's why you have to practice fighting. You also shouldn't be afraid to walk away from a fight. Sometimes it's the best thing you can do. No matter how good you are, there will always be a time that you should slow it down and play for the win. Getting that great first game is so important to qualifying, so don't toss it by keying people after the sixth or seventh zone. How to play opens, passive. All right, I get it. W King isn't for everybody. What if you just want to take a couple fights or not a fight at all? Well, I guarantee you, you will have to take a few fights throughout the tournament. Like I said earlier, it's going to be almost impossible to qualify for the finals without being able to fight at all. To qualify with the fewest fights possible, here's what you need to do. First, find a low key drop spot. This can be at the edge of a POI or a secret loot route with at least six chests. I'd recommend landing towards the outside of the map for this. This will limit the area that the players can come from and will simplify your game. 
Once you get a decent loadout, farm up your mats and find somewhere to chill. It's really important to max your heals before endgame because you won't be getting any refreshes if you aren't getting kills. Certain players like to hang out in storm, while others like to camp in a bush or building. Both will work, but I would avoid center zone and play edge throughout the early and mid game. Overall, your first game is super important when you're playing passively. You're gonna need that big burst of points early on and you won't get an easier lobby than your first one. Having a good first game will set you on the right path to being able to play for placement consistently. For players who can drop 10 plus kills a game, they'll have the ability to come back, but this isn't really the option for passive players. Let's quickly cover mid game before we talk about how to get the win. Even if you are playing aggressive, there will be times you have to sit and do nothing. Unless you're a pro player, you have to slow it down after the first couple of games. This means hiding in buildings, bushes, or even playing in storm. Playing like this doesn't guarantee that you won't see any players, but it makes it far less likely. You have to be okay with doing nothing at times. Once you've farmed your materials and have a good loadout, go sit somewhere and wait for your placement points to kick in. The absolute worst thing you can do when it comes to playing tournaments is to play a game for 15 to 20 minutes and only get a 25th place. Now you've wasted a ton of time and gotten almost zero points. Have patience, relax, go on TikTok if you have to. In a perfect scenario, you're still gonna wanna be looking around and paying attention to your surroundings in case a player comes up to you. You can and should be doing this until about the sixth zone. Then it's time to focus on the win. Endgame doesn't start till the seventh zone, but your positioning in the sixth zone is really important. As you approach the endgame, here are three tips to give you the best chance to win. You've likely spent some materials along the way, so this is the time to refarm. You want to find spots that will give you good vision and a natural defense from other players. The tops of buildings and hills are great for this. You've gotta make sure that you have options to rotate to the next zone. This could be a whole video on itself, but simply put, you wanna box up in areas that give you easy rotates to the next zone, even if it's a max pull. For example, you don't want to be sitting in the bottom of a valley with players on either side or in a wide open area where the entire lobby can see you. The smallest decisions at this point are going to make or break your game. Zone number eight is the first one that starts in storm. You should be delaying your rotate just slightly to make sure that you can box in the zone. This is so you don't have to box twice and waste materials. If you wait just a few seconds before rotating, you can go right into a position that is safe. Now is a great time to talk about material usage and economy. The easiest way to think about what material you should use and when to use it is to ask yourself, are these builds permanent or temporary? If you're just using them to rotate to the next zone, then use wood or sometimes brick if it can be refarmed. If you're going to be boxing up for more than a few seconds, you should always be using brick or metal. You should also switch to hard mats whenever you're getting sprayed. Players building in wood look weak, even if you're not. That's what opponents are thinking. So box up with metal or brick and rotate with wood. Okay, now back to the end game. There isn't gonna be a single perfect formula to get the win, but if you follow these rules, you'll get more wins and do better during the end games. Stay to the left or the right side of zones. You don't wanna be rotating through the middle of the zone. This is where the most players are and the most likely to get damaged or killed. Use your materials to protect yourself. This might seem obvious, but we all get greedy trying to save mats and then die. It's better to spend all your mats than to die with 555. Use what you have before making desperate plays. Along the same lines as before, be specific in your build placements. One of the most common mistakes players make is to spam builds through the endgame. Try to avoid putting extra builds outside of your tarp or boxes. Placing extra builds aren't going to help you, and those are valuable builds that could be helping you later on. If you have a bad habit with this, this is something that can easily be worked on while free building or playing 32 man box fight zone wars. Rotate first, then look back. Too many players get stuck fighting in the back of zone and then take a ton of storm damage or even die to storm. You wanna make sure that you're rotating to the front side of zone, boxing up and then looking back for kills or refreshes. The easiest kills are gonna come in the middle of zones on the low ground. This is gonna help you avoid getting focused and get you some easy kills along the way. You gotta look for high ground. Height wins games, it's as simple as that. So you'll need to be looking up at height before making a play. In a perfect scenario, you're gonna wanna play for height in 10th zone or later, unless it's a dead game. If you play high ground too early, you're not gonna have the mats to play out the entire game. Here are three things that I always do when I'm looking at height. Is the player on wood? Are they backside of zone? Can you chop them out? In some of these low elo lobbies, players will just be dropping down from height so you can always take it for free. Remember to keep your eyes on height because you'll never know if you don't look up. Once you're on high ground, here's how you hold it down. You're going to want to make sure that you only drop down if you're forced to. You have to look for players that are using hard mats or are on second height. Spray at these players to force them to lower layers and to spin their mats. Another big thing for height is to watch where zones pull to see if you have a potential weakness. If it pulls up a hill and you're not focused on it, you could lose high ground. Lastly, keep the high ground until the very end. Even in the final 1v1, you want to keep playing your position. The only time you're going to want to drop down is if the last two players are fighting below you and you can clean it up. Something that many players struggle with is keeping a good mindset. You're not going to win every single game. Not even the best players in the world go seven for seven. It's so important to keep a strong mental throughout the tournament. One bad game isn't going to make or break your tournament. 
but losing your mental will. If you get frustrated, walk away from the game for a couple minutes. Don't let your last game ruin the next one. Stay focused on your goal and I promise you, you will achieve it in time. I know I threw out a lot in this video, so let me know if you have any questions in the comments. You can also join my thesis discord where I do weekly VOD reviews and help players improve. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.